Hope you're doing good. Micah back with another video. Back here to talk about good lock and the various types of improvements and updates they've made throughout the last couple of years when it comes to good lock in particular and how I use good lock on my phone. Keep in mind with this video, although it's going to be a guide, there are certain modules that I have not used or that I'm currently not using. And so those I will hold towards like the end of each section. So there's two sections in good lock and I'm going to get to those that I don't use and just do a quick brief overview of those modules at the end of each section. So if you guys are interested in this video, make sure you guys like the like button, subscribe to the channel, the notification bell, that way you miss my videos. So you and I can sit back to that see what's cracking. Now let's get into the video. This is the Galaxy S24 Plus. We're gonna be showcasing it with all this on. This is the Pataka case of the day. Mag Easy case four, link will be in the description for you guys. This is the Moonrise color. They also have various other colors, including, that's interesting, <laughs> including Sunset, Carbon Fiber, uh, and a couple other weave, fusion weave technology based patterns. So again, I got that covered for you guys in the description box. So in order for you guys to get good lock, it's right there next to the Galaxy Store. You would actually have to go into the Galaxy Store. And upon going in here, hit the search up at the top and then search for Galaxy Store. Now, or uh, my bad. <laughs> good lock. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Good lock right here. You have good lock that you can download. Alternatively, you also have battery guardians. I actually, I think it's now called good guardians. You probably saw it there. I actually forgot to download this on. <laughs> so this is a way for you to also have more control over your battery life. This can be for a whole nother video as well, but we're just going to talk about good lock today. So you can download good lock via the galaxy store. Once you do, you open it here. This is good lock. This is one of Samsung's premier apps that adds additional functionality and settings to your Galaxy device, primarily for customization. And so what I mean by sections is you have the makeup section and the life up section. The makeup is primarily with customization. Life up is with some more utility based functions. But with the makeup section, we're going to start with theme park. Theme park is a very good app because now it pretty much houses all of their customization for your keyboard, for your quick panel, your icon, your volume panel. And so we'll end up getting callbacks to these apps with other modules. But with keyboard, you will customize this here by clicking on either a keyboard you already have created or you would hit create new. And so once my focus stops tripping, and this is where you can come in here and create your keyboard based off colors. You can change the, the icon, the font, well, yeah, the icon colors. You can change the the keyboard itself colors. You can change the the key colors. You can change the uh, symbol colors. You can add a picture if you wanted to. And down here at your fingertips, you get you can change a key style. And again, as I said, colors to, at your discretion. And then you can also customize between a day and night keyboard. I find this to be very, very useful. My keyboard is more or less blacked out because I'm using dark mode right now. But this is a great way for you to gain customization of your phone by customizing your keyboard. Now backing out real quick before moving on from that, you see Key Cafe, Keys Cafe. This along with the keyboard will help you be able to further edit your keyboard. So let's just look at mine real quick. You can actually edit the actual various keys, how the spacing of the keys, what you actually want as part of your keyboard down here. You can, again, as I said, you can change the sizing of each key. So if you want your A key to be bigger than any other key, you can make it bigger. You can try to make all the keys essentially bigger to fill in the space. You can eliminate the emoji symbol, a key if you wanted to you can eliminate your enter key your, your you can shorten or, or widen the space key sometimes you may not realize how often you hit b or n instead of the space when trying to type or text relatively fast so you have granular customization over what your keyboard will look like in here in keys cafe and you can also then add more theming here with 
the color of the key if you wanted to go this route instead you can actually have some pre-made custom keys uh key keyboard layouts right here you can add effects so when you actually press on keys you get lighting effects and you can actually change the sound of your keys if you like having your sound turned on so of course mine sounds like the typical chiclet sound but you if i wanted to i can come in here and actually change the sound of my keys if i wanted to so again very interesting now let's say i wanted to do retro and you can bring this key up here but let me go ahead and show you guys off camera you'll, you'll be able to hear it here that's retro if i do calm that's calm I do fun. Oh, I like fun. And then here's a pink touch. Okay, that's fine. You got space touch. So I think I'm going to go with fun touch because I like fun touch. So if you could hear that, you can see that. Samsung has added some very very clean customization and they've updated various looks here You can even do stickers you can play a keyboard game to really try out your keyboard You even have advanced keyboard settings right here where you can long longer space bar while URL typing you can auto replacement sensitivity you can change that you can turn off delete accelerator which is kind of fire so like with samsung keyboards if you hold the delete it'll start deleting letter by letter and then it'll start deleting word by word pretty fast so you can actually turn that off if you wanted to you can double tap interval of three by four keyboards you can use sticker suggestions in a larger view so so much customization when it comes to the keyboard in itself and you can gain access through theme park or keys cafe now coming back in the theme park, you will be able to also customize your quick panel. So what this looks like, right? This shade here. And since I'm in dark mode, it for whatever reason it's actually not dark mode. When I'm not in dark mode, it's it's dark mode. It's it's I don't know. Maybe I thought the update would address it. Very still weird to me. But this is where you can actually create your own quick panel where you can change the quick panel and it's along the same lines as the keyboard you can change the quick panel itself keyboard uh, color you can change the blur level you can change the font level of your notifications your notification card colors you can change the quick settings colors the actual color of the icon the brightness bar the shade behind the brightness bar so that gray area you can change that you can change the font within the quick settings you can change so much with your quick settings panel or notification panel with this option here and of course you have a day and night schedule if you want to use you can upload a picture for it instead samsung just gives you that kind of control when it comes to your phones and the other thing that you can do is if you didn't want to access it there samsung has some pre-made quick panels within quickstar so upon running into quickstar Quickstar is where you can come in here and style your own quick panel. And they have some preset ones already that you can use. So these are some good ones to use as well. And all you got to do is click on it and it will activate it. And I think you do have to turn this on in order for the theme park slash Quickstar to use your quick panels. But that is another customization aspect of your quick panel is two different ways to get there so i don't and then sometimes when you back out it doesn't actually back out appropriately that they still haven't fixed that with good lock but you see samsung is trying to house everything in one location <laughs> so that way you know you can find everything at ease and not have so many multiple you know modules now i would say instead of having those additional modules like with the quick panel just remove that option and just bundle it into the theme park i think that's a lot smarter because the Quickstar has other functionality that we'll get into later. It doesn't quite have to do with customizing the theme or color of your you know, your, your quick panel. So I hope that they continue to evaluate that and try to find better ways to bundle all these features into one place instead of having a hip hop all the way throughout Goodlock for the same level of customization on one specific aspect of your phone. Now, I didn't actually get to theme itself, but you can actually change the theme of your device 
by clicking on uh, new. And here you can change a wallpaper. You can explore more wallpapers gallery. So if that's what I wanted, I would hit next. And then now I have different options here in terms of how I want these things to look. So you can theme every aspect of the phone via the color and it'll change the color of your text messages, your, your quick panel, your calculator, your phone app and other various apps much more tied to Samsung native apps. But this is a way for you to customize day and night in your theme park. And so if you wanted to just come in here and do something, you can do it this way as well. To me, I don't really use theme park all that often. Theme park is more of a, a place that houses all my other customizations that I do take advantage of. The next thing we're going to move on to is icon. By clicking on icon, you can actually change the icons on your phone. So no longer, gone are the days, if you will, having to download a third-party launcher just to change your icons on Samsung devices. Good Lock now gives you that capability with Theme Park. And all you have to do is come in here, create new. I think I do have some icons still downloaded. But if I wanted to, I can come in here, click icon pack, and then pick one of my icon packs. Let's say I wanted to go with like my One UI Dark. But well, now it's going to change all my icons to the dark version of them. And a lot of these are kind of outdated if you look up there. But if I want to, I can do that. I can change the shade, I guess. So you can still kind of get a little customization in here with your icons. And then, of course, you can go into the actual... You can go into... You can select the app itself, I believe. Um, where is it at? I think all you got to do is click on an icon. Let me see here. If I click on, you used to be able to, but maybe, oh yeah, okay, so change icons. Yes, so this is where you can come in to the actual phone uh, and change the individual icons of all your apps. So your app icon, you can individually change. So if you don't like curtain, certain one that you have for it, you can come right on in here and change it and you're as good as new from that perspective. So I do like that. I wish I had a better uh, messages because I think that messages is, is for Google. It's not just for Samsung messages. I think it is for Google messages. But it would be nice to actually change it. And all you got to do is click on it. So let me find. You know, I elected to change mine to green. Now, in large part, once you click on it and then start scrolling, they're largely in alphabetical order. What you can't do is come up here to the search icon and actually try to search for icons that are similar to the icon you're trying to change that way you can actually keep it in line with something that you can envision pressing on for that app so again great customization here when it comes to the oh well first i think what i gotta do is and then once you actually click it you want to install it just call it something i like calling it mark one if it's my first one and then mark so on and so forth that's how i kind of name mine i don't know if i'm actually going to keep this but Let's just say, for the sake of argument, I actually want to click on it and I want to apply it. Well, now it's going to apply the icons. And once I click out, you'll see my icons are now changed. So I would probably have to come here and change that icon so that way it also matches with the rest of the theming. So that way nothing, you know, inadvertently stands out. I'll even change YouTube so that way YouTube looks more YouTube. And then in the Play Store, in the Galaxy Store, if I could find better versions of those apps, that's what I would do in order to maintain my theming. So now let's come back into Volume Panel. Now this is going to be interesting because you can actually change what your panel looks like. So if you want to click in here, you can change the color, the background, the font color. The font color and the shading behind each panel, you can change all those colors here in the volume panel. But I think this customization is not good as if you download Sound Assistant, which we're getting to later in this video. And of course, you have a day and night scale for the different themes you can have, which are two per each customization theme. So that is Theme Park. Now, backing out of Theme Park, I hate when it does that. Lockstar. Lockstar is where you can have fun with your lock, uh, your lock screen because if you press on, you can change your timeout to be whatever you want here, right? And then if you want to change uh, any aspect of it, really, you just click on it and boom, you're in here. And you can change 
all of this you can you can move where you want this to sit right you know lower or higher wherever you want you can change the position of your actual clock I, you can't size it as big as you want to anymore but if you want to change your clock in here you can change it in here instead and these are your options that you get you can change you can actually add new types of widgets which are basically full widgets for like the home screen so i think that would be a little bit ridiculous but hey to each his own i you know you again see you can have full level widgets on your lock screen and not just the six or seven that you see on the uh, as the default options for your lock screen and then once you're done just hit save and this would be what your new lock screen looks like of course you can still change those options down there for me i don't use this because it, it lost a lot more functionality than before and then if i want just turn it back off now if i press back out you used to be able to also change your always on display but i don't see that option anymore unless and i'm not in the right spot but i thought i was hmm interesting all right so that's lockstar Coming in here to Keys Cafe, I've already showed you that. Navstar is how you can change your navigation bar down at the bottom and get more customization out of it. In terms of the transparent hints, allow back gesture and full screen, enable extra gesture settings. You can change the background, the arrow color, which is your back arrow, right? And then your back gesture sensitivity you can change. And then you can change your gesture handle so you can lower it or higher it or make it bigger, make it smaller if you want to do by turning this on. And then if we come in here, if you have buttons, you can change your button layout. So you can change or rearrange your buttons if you wanted to. So very good, clean customization for Navstar. I suggest people that can to jump on the navigation bar because that's where we're at now. Like all phones pretty much have navigation. Samsung is one of the only ones that really still supply button uh, navigation but if you are still on that legacy type of play you can at least customize those buttons if you wanted to now home up is where you get, the fun really begins for me because this is where you can change your home screen you can actually change your grid size to be larger than what you get at default so if you want to go seven by seven you could do that you can also change your app screen grid to seven by seven you can change your favorite count that it's your first, your row at the bottom you can change this by up to nine apps and i believe if they don't get smaller you can swipe through them but i'm not 100 percent certain on that so let's just i uh, don't nah. so let's say i have nine and i hit apply if we swipe out and i want to drag more apps down here let's say i want to drag youtube down here so yes they just get smaller and smaller so to each his own on that for sure i'm not a fan of that i like my apps all kind of being in unison so i'm gonna stick with the five you can loop your pages so if you loop your page once you make it to the second page it'll loop right back to the first page so you can just keep swiping if you wanted to so if i turn that on watch so if i swipe it'll swipe me right back to oh maybe you have to have at least three all right so i figured it out in order for loop pages to work where you can swipe like this you actually have to turn off your discovery page if you have this off it will loop in that way now for me i like my discovery page so for those reasons i'm going to turn loop well it doesn't matter i can leave it on or off but let's just turn it back off for my use but if you don't use discovery page and you want to loop your pages so you can just keep swiping in one continuous motion that's a great way to do that you can have additional blur control some people complain about the amount of blur that they have with the notification panels or when they're in the app screens and whatnot or app library i have your app drawer if you will you can have more control over that with these two options there this is my favorite feature from home up which is hide app icon label and as you notice i don't have no icons anywhere which is also why it's important to make sure your, your icons are appropriate so that way you ain't got no issues that's interesting that's for cash app but i guess that's the square icon but yes, what a perfect, beautiful, clean aesthetic you can have with your phone when you have no icon showing on your home screen.
and that's anywhere even in folders there's no app icon so that's something that i very very much so like and appreciate and i'm glad that they have kept and i actually hope that feature becomes native in the samsung settings because i think it it more than deserves to be so you can change your folders you can actually customize your folders and do pop-up folders instead so if i turn that on if i come back out and i come back over here now my folder is going to look a little different looks a little more round so i like i like this this looks clean as well you can change the color of the folder you even have the option to do it right here if you wanted to i like that of course, you can give it a name if you wanted to. You can add more apps by hitting the plus icon. You can you can already do that anyway, I believe. But again, you have more options here with the folder grid with pop-up folder. In Home Up, you can back up and restore your layout. So this backs up on a regular basis for me, I guess. Uh, I can even switch it to like a one-week thing if I wanted to. So that way it backs up what my layout looks like. So if anything ever happens, I can always kind of recall it. I don't think this really works that well, in my opinion, because I I don't know. It's weird. Unless you have to download like, what is it, a bin file or something like that to then be able to recall back to from this, from your file explorer or whatever. I don't find that to really work that well. So to each his own with that, the sharing manager is kind of like a shell of itself in my opinion. This doesn't even really work the way it used to. And I think it's because these features kind of got embedded into the quick share settings uh, look anyway. So there's really not too much to share here. I do still have that on, show quick share devices. And in terms of favorites, Okay, you can still kind of put favorites in here, I guess. All right, these are my favorites here. Those numbers don't even exist anymore. So you ain't got to worry about that. But that's interesting. These add favorite to direct share. I, I believe these are already here added for me. So those take what you will. It does say none selected. Let's say if I select it. Okay, so someone does pop up there in terms of. Okay, so that works out then. I'm going to put me up there. And then, but now, unfortunately, you can only choose between there and Twitter, which is weird. But nonetheless, you can still have some favorites there. You can share. See, I, you can't click on that no more. So sharing manager still kind of works, still kind of doesn't play with it, if you will. But that's the kind of the, the overview, if you will, on sharing manager. And then task changer. This is one of my other favorite features. This way you can come in here and actually change your what this looks like. So I have mine look like this. I like that. And I like it how it kind of offsets. But if I wanted to center my app, I could by just doing that. And now when I swipe up, boom, it does it like that. You can actually do a mini mode where it shrinks them. So now they're smaller. I don't care for mini mode, but you can do that. You can have your app labels in there if you wanted to. I don't. You can also have the search bar. So if you have the search bar, now the search bar pops up there at the top. I don't need that as part of it. Recommended apps at the bottom and through machine learning, it kind of tries to suggest your most recently used or most often used apps. I think when you're switching out of this, apps down there will pop up. YouTube is always in there for me. And then you have switched to previous apps with gestures. That's still on, of course, as you saw me trying to use allow bottom gesture in full screen mode, gesture top priority setting, and then bottom gesture sensitivity settings. You can, with your task bar down at the bottom of your navigation bar, you still have control over that. You have other options, of course, like list, which is the default with Samsung devices anyway. You have grid, which is kind of like the default for their tablets. You have vertical list, you have slim list, and of course, stack, which is what I like. And these are your changes in home up. Clock faces, this is where it gets interesting because you can get real customizy with different clocks if you wanted to. If you didn't like the options you got in all the other ones, you can create your clock in here. You can come in here to studio. And these, some of these clocks, oh no, these are for your, oh yeah, yeah. I think these are both for your phone and or for your watch. But these are ones you can also have. And some of these also pop up in your lock screen settings when you're trying to change your clock. So keep that in mind when using clock face. Quick star, as we went over the quick star panel, you can also hide your 
indicator icons at the top. So if you wanted to come in here and you wanted to hide certain things in turn, uh, from your expanded panel, your lock screen, or your home screen, you could. If you want to hide your mobile signal, you can. As you saw, it disappears up at the top. It comes back. It disappears. It comes back. So you can have granular control over all the things you want up here. At one point, I had nothing showing. It was super clean. Just my notifications were rolling. I even hid my clock. And how would you hide your clock? In clock settings. You can show date. You can show 8 p.m. You can show seconds. I kind of like the date. They do that on the tablets, but it takes up a lot of space. So if you want, you can even hide the clock. As you see, the clock is gone. You can put it on the right and have your notifications on the left. You can keep it back over here on the left. It's all at your discretion. And that's what I like about Good Lock is it gives you all these options to do so. And then of course you can apply color palette to notification icons as well, which I think is, maybe I should turn that on. I mean, I'm not, I'm not using it right now, but I do like that. And then change quick setting button grid. You know, you can adjust the quick setting button spacing. So if you want to space your buttons up here, you can have that option to do so in Quick Star. And then your quick access, you know, I have half and half between quick settings and notification, meaning swipe this side is notifications, swipe this side is my full quick settings panel. So again, that is already on within the regular settings, but you can actually now customize the spacing on that if you wanted to in Quickstar. Now, the last two, Wonderland. Wonderland gives you the ability to add motion effects to background images, create a gradient background, add particle effects, and add 3D effects to portrait mode photo wallpapers. And just to kind of give you an example of what that kind of looks like, this is what Wonderland will do, and you can add a little bit of you know parallax to this type of stuff and get creative with your wallpapers from this perspective as well. And I don't see nothing wrong with that. I think this is just fine. Uh, you know, to each his own when it comes to how far they want to customize their phones. For me, I'm good on Wonderland, but that is an additional option. And edge lighting is the other option in makeup. It's really the last option, and this allows you to add lighting to the edge of your device something that they used to do with the edge phones and it used to be part of edge panel i think but now they have a module within good lock where you can customize the edge lighting style displayed on the screen when receiving notifications set styles by keyword provide expressions of emotions for notifications using emoji text stickers so let's say a, a text message comes in or you receive that emoji or something like that the screen will light up with that emoji and or if you have your apps color coded with edge lighting it'll light the edge up of your device based on the app that's notifying you of received messages and alerts so this can get kind of fun and i've tempted i've been tempted to download it and add that to my phone just know like some of these features that you add if you're mindful of your battery life some of this can start to seep on the battery life if you're not concerned about battery life i wouldn't be concerned about that i would say have fun with your device and you should anyway despite battery life because it is your phone it is something that you use on a regular so why not take advantage of some of these features and have fun with your phone. Change images to app icons. So you can also do that as well. Change app launch methods from notification pop-ups and double tap to launch apps, prevent swiping down. So you get plenty of customization in here when it comes to your phone. Edge Lighting Plus, make your own edge lighting styles. And as you see, you can do icons you can see the style by keyword so words you get that stuff will pop up so again you can have major fun within the good lock <laughs> uh, app for your phone now this is where you can have fun with your you're gonna have some good camera abilities for sure in here and this is where you got nice shot and camera assistant both of these go hand in hand with the camera app camera assistant is more or less kind of semi built into the native camera app and by downloading the module you'll have more access so we'll go here we'll start here first this is where you can have a little bit more fun so 2x crop zoom shortcut so add a 2x zoom shortcut to camera this zoom uses a re oh, i can't see re mosaic okay crop of the high resolution sensor to match the quality of an optical lens 
auto HDR, uh, capture more details in bright and dark areas of your pictures and videos. I don't have picture softening on, but if you did, you, ha you have off, medium, and high, and we pretty much know that's like a filter for your face, <laughs> pretty much. And then auto lens switching, distortion correction, high resolution settings, I have adaptive pixel, which reduces noise and low light shots by combining multiple lower resolution frames into the higher, ooh, into the final high resolution picture and an upscale digital zoom. If the resolution decreases due to zoom upscale pictures back to the resolution you selected. So they are definitely bringing the A game when it comes to camera features with camera assistant. And then you have quick tap shutter prioritize focus over speed that's my that's what i do some people just will want speed over focus you can have that as well video recording in photo mode and then timer multi-photo options is one uh, dof adapter corrections so if you have some type of depth of field adapter on your device this will correct that distortion for you anamorphic lens correction if you're using an anamorphic lens on the back of your phone for video potentially pictures it will correct that as well and then audio monitoring while shooting video play the sound being recorded through connected bluetooth hdmi or usb headphones or speakers so essentially maybe you're kind of sort of using your phone as a recording device maybe podcasting or something like that and you have a headset that you were able to split into the phone you should be able to hear that monitor that audio with your headset and then your camera timeout you can change the timing of that you get the options of one two five and ten minutes you can dim screen while recording to save battery life and to lessen the heat accumulation of your device because depending on how long you're recording it's going to generate some heat right so you want to be mindful of that and then of course if you are attached to an hdmi you can get a clean preview through that here as well so that's camera assistant nice shot takes it a little bit just a little bit further and this is with screenshots in particular so disable crop snapping when editing you can add the delete button so if you take a screenshot the delete button will now be available so if you maybe screenshot it by accident or you no longer wanted it you can delete it and then you have selfie video options so when you're doing google duo calls any form of video calls you can come here and make the background color transparent or you can double the selfie size and you'll be good to go there that way you, you'll get more look they'll get more look of you when on that video call and you can actually turn on do not disturb during screen recording which I think might be a good idea unless in you're trying to show an example of a notification in your screen recording. So be mindful if you decide to use that feature there. So those two things are in reference to the camera and screenshot slash video call. So keep keep those in mind for sure. Multi-start doesn't really make all that much sense because they already kind of baked these features into, if not decks, the native settings and advanced features when it comes to multi-windows and, and whatnot for your device. But you can quick launch of the multi window, press and hold the recent key to quickly access the multi window. So, if I, well, let's see, I don't know if you'll be able to do that. Uh, let's see, if I turn that on, open in split view, open in pop up view. So, you do have the option to change that. So, let's say I do that. I think if I click on the icon, you can open in split view, open in pop up view. So this gives you a little bit extra control here. You can do multi-focus. App that stopped when they lose focus no longer stop. That's definitely key. Remove blur on adjusting split view. So if you're, again, let's try it here. If I want to open a split view and then I want to open camera assistant back up. If I want to, now you don't get the blur. So... I don't like that. I'd rather have the blur. So let me come in here. Uh, give me my blur back. <laughs> give me my blur back. See, I like I like that look a lot more. I like that a lot more. And then just swipe all the way down and get rid of what you were just looking at. Remove or uh, prevent pop-up minimization and set pop-up gesture size. So all these are good granular controls, especially if you're a big multi-window pop-up view person. Come in here, multi-star still has a few extra controls to your advantage 
And then you got Registar, a Registar that I don't use anymore, but this basically gives you ability to do double tap or a back tap options. You can customize your settings home, meaning your menu order and group settings. So if you come in here, you can rearrange your settings. I used to do this. I haven't done it in a while, but you can come in here and actually change the layout of your settings so you can find everything the way you want to find them. So if you want all your most important stuff up at the top, move it on up to the top, right? I, that's, that's what I would do. I think the one thing I might do is take my software update <laughs> and move it up here to the top somewhere around mode I'm right there. Under, yep. That's a good spot for me. I'm going to hit save. And so now I have that kind of there. And then you can show the account's name and or the nickname. And then, yeah. So that that's that's the quick view on the settings. You can change your settings, change history. Oh, this is a, so things you can see that you may have changed or touched. You can come in here and look at that. And I guess to some degree reverse. No, maybe not reverse it. But, yes, these are things that that were just on and turned back off and or on based off of a routine that I currently have running or that I had running, which is my sleep mode. So that's why those settings, those hit that history is in there. You can, you know, your search options, display policy, menu order, allow creation of a shortcut, hide tag suggestions. So that's interesting. So like in settings, you know, you can scroll all the way to the top and search for something. Well, now you can actually let me show you that. So this button right here, you can hide your search, your tag suggestions and allow to create a shortcut, I guess, within here if you want to look for something in particular. I didn't even know that. That's pretty, that's, that's what's up. All right. So you have that option as well. So if you care about some of these things, you have that option. You have side, keep pressing, hold action. Now, this is where it gets fun because you can actually add, I guess, some more. Yeah, press and hold the side key to execute an action. So if you don't like the Bixby, you don't like the power menu, you can come in here and add your own press and hold action with Registar. And then back tap, of course, you can actually have double tap, triple tap, and you can have certain gates in terms of like if the device is locked, then the back tap doesn't work, or you can change the gate. So I think I have to turn it on, which I don't feel <laughs> Y'all better be glad I'm doing this video for y'all. If I turn on, if I come in here and I do device locked, yeah, so you can do uh, device lock, you can do power saving mode or back tap no longer works, low battery below 15%. You know, now back tap gestures don't work. So you can have options in here to kind of limit the accidental triggers of your back tap functionality. And then, of course, event detection. So you can come in here and see what trigger back tap and see if you can work your way around having that happen again. So that way it works when you need it to work, not when it wants to work. Sound Assistant, probably one of the best apps Samsung has in here in Good Lock. You can customize your volume rocker in this way, and this is how you can get some real cool, some real cool looking. Um, let's see, expanded. I'm trying to figure out where is it at because I knew where it was before, and now I can't find it. Oh, so this is where you can actually have what you want to be displayed. You know, your layout is on the right side of the phone. You show your volume level. You can have a floating button all the time. Dual app volume. Uh, move and then in your expanded panel you have show toolbar functions app volume bluetooth metronome some like with cars i don't know if it will save the setting for cars in particular because i used to try to use it and i would always have to come back and turn it off or change my Bluetooth, which is basically the syncing of the words with the audio in cars sometimes there's latency right uh or most of the time there's latency between the car bluetooth and the phone well you can come in here and, and adjust that if you wanted to just know that it might adjust it across everything so even when you get out the car now your audio sync with the lip sync is off and so you'd have to come here and change that so I, that's what bluetooth metronome is and you can have the option to show it in your grid or not now upon coming back out of here make your own volume panel colors and this is where the fun really begins because this is where you can get creative with different looks for the actual volume so i might even switch mine to something like that for the lighting effect i like that I, and you come in here and theme it if you wanted to so if you didn't want to do it via theme part you can come in here to sound assistant and do it yourself you can do individual app volumes so by clicking on that you can come in here and do it this way if you wanted to. You can control media volume. 
you can do media manner mode when your phone is set to vibrate or mute media volume is also muted so i i have that off because sometimes the phone's on vibrate but i'm still trying to listen to what i'm you know watching or something like that so that's why i have that off you can also change your step volume give you kind of a greater level of adjustment for your volume sound control music with volume keys favorite media app select an app to play control music when you press multimedia keys so your connected headphones bluetooth device etc if the current open app supports multimedia keys it will play through the app instead option there you got the bluetooth metronome as i said sync bluetooth sound for videos exactly bluetooth headphones is most likely you're not gonna have an issue with that it's just cars that has this problem that's the only, <laughs> that's the only thing that i don't like so i wish you it would save its specific profile for something like that because then i would turn that on change the advanced audio settings on your device and here's where you can alert through headphone reverse stereo customize vibration patterns uh, voice changer, multi sound, select which app can play audio at the same time as other apps. That can throw you off because if you're watching YouTube and you decide to scroll Instagram, you're going to have two audios going at the same time and it's going to throw you through a loop. So keep that in mind when it comes to Sound Assistant as a whole. But I think that's a very, very good app for Samsung's Good Lock and for the, for the device as a whole. Now, Noti Star, I don't use, but it's not bad. Per se, this is where you can actually manage your notification history. And so just by clicking on some of this, as you see, new notification management service, easy and fast access from the lock screen. So it's somewhere here on the lock screen. And then convenient notification filtering by app and keyword. So if you want to change how your notifications kind of came in, you can do that. Customize the lock screen entry point and then copy and share notification content so you have the option here with noti star i don't use it i think it's just maybe a bit too much for me but as you see select apps to save notifications create a page where you can check notifications that contain the chosen keywords search notification you need by keyword quickly check the notification history through the short cut icon on the lock screen change the location and colors of the lock screen shortcut icons configure period of storage or storing notifications so you have those options here when it comes to noti star Edge touch is cool. I didn't scroll past one, did I? No, I didn't. I haven't got to it yet. Edge touch is cool because if, let's say you have accidental touches along the edges, you can come in the edge touch and actually block off or filter additional edging of the phone. So that way you don't do accidental touching. So now it starts to kind of squeeze in the touching area. So it'll still look the same along the edge. It's just now that area is more muted. For touch it's no it's no longer it can be as sensitive as you need it to when it comes to touch i think that's a decent feature i know that was a big deal when it came to uh edge based phones or curve based phones i did used to use this back in the day with like the what was it the s whew, the s did i use it with the s10 e i may have used this with the s7 edge too but definitely a great feature there and then nice catch is something that i like i don't use but I have contemplated downloading it because you can look into the causes of unexplained actions such as vibrations or the screen turning on. And so if we look here, vibration, ringer mode, call mode, toast pop-up. And toast pop-up is like if you made a change, I don't know how to explain it. It's a little I, uh, notification you get at the bottom of the phone. It's kind of very light, lightly transparent. And uh, you'll get it even like with updates sometimes. Like after your phone updates, it'll say like your phone was successfully updated. Like those are toast pop-ups. It'll keep account of those. Ads, screens, interesting. Screen on, setting, setting, change in media volume, and uh, media volume mute. So upon clicking in here, you see learn about the cause of device occurrences you were curious about. So you can check your vibration history, your ringer mode history, call mode history, toast history, detect commercials like it can get pretty granular from that perspective buzz what what app is causing vibrations this time so you can get in-depth <laughs> uh communication basically from your phone to you about what's going on with your phone so let's say you're trying to find something rogue on your phone or maybe something that you 
maybe a battery hogger and you don't quite know what it is. It might just be it's vibrating your phone all the time. Come into this app, see where it's at, see what, boom, oh, it's you? Oh, okay. <laughs> Goodbye. That's what you can do with this app. That way you can have more granular control over what's what's basically bothering you, when it needs to bother you, if it needs to bother you. Why is my phone screen suddenly turning on? All the things that trigger your screen on. So you get very, very good granular control in here. What apps keep sending toast pop-ups? So again, great, great, great app. I'm tempted as I talked about it, download it. I'm thinking about it. We'll see. One Hand Operation Plus, another great app, especially a great app for, you know, accessibility reasons, as well as people who just don't want to use two hands on their phone. You can come in at One Hand Operation and control having another handlebar on the, along whatever side of the phone, left or right, and then what different swipe options along the edge do what that way you never have to touch like put two hands on your phone again or make it very less likely that you'll have to put two hands on your phone so as you see the different things you are capable of diagonal up diagonal down straight right you know what i'm saying uh just long swipe quick swipe or short swipe like they have a lot of different actions to go along with that as well so you can operate your phone flawlessly with just one hand so I definitely recommend this if that's something that you are a fan of. Fast and easy app switching. Like it, it, it gets easily control your volume, brightness, and settings. So by doing a swipe action, it'll bring up this menu for you in which you can then control things. Like, come on now. Like Samsung is keeping everybody in mind when it comes to those using their phones and they give you these these features with good luck. And then routine plus, if you use routine and modes and you're not satisfied with the amount of routines you have, you can come in here and do even more. You can have now added conditions, unlock with fingerprints, S Pen action, side and navigation, button action, added movements, text reader, direction, keys touch macro so basically you can add macros to the routines with this routines plus module easy uh, easily use features added through suggested routines easily share with qr codes and import saved routines so again so much here in the good lock app all you have to do is come in here play around and experiment yourself to have fun so this is the good lock explained Technically, in 2024, they've done a lot to tweak and adjust and remove and update so many of these features. So I thought I'd bring one full video here for you guys. So that way you guys can check it out for yourselves and think whether or not you want to download it and start using some of these features. So let me know down in the comment section below if you guys enjoyed this video. If you're going to try to use a test and experiment with some of these features, I'd like to know your thoughts down in the comment section below but again as always if you guys haven't already make sure you guys ignite the like button subscribe to the channel the notification bell that way that's my video so you and i can sit back to that see what's cracking jermaine mike is signing out until the next video wait for